Hey YouTube Force Arena players, welcome to another video. In this video we are looking at Jin Erso, um, who made an appearance in the recent Rogue One movie. Um, let's look at Jin here in some 1v1 um, PvP. Funny enough, I played the same player twice. Um, I don't know if this has happened to you. Um, mind you, it was really early morning, I was playing this, I couldn't sleep, I've been a bit ill. Um, and I played a couple of games really really early I couldn't really think straight um, but I thought I'd give Jin a go as I unlocked her recently as you can see she moves rapidly does a little bit of a spin Darth Vader pulls her back there um, but soon falls now importantly with Jin she's got some um, a passive and obviously her main skill now her passive is what's called an underdog and what that basically is is that her, the attack power of any range unit, so anyone who's got a gun, for example, like the um, Pathfinders or your Sniper, those kind of units will benefit. Um, it increases their, um, their, their range by 18% if the remaining number of turrets that you have is less than your enemy. So say you lose a turret and your enemy's got two turrets and you only got one, um, then the ability will kick in and always when the ability is active the circle will highlight and flash to let you know it's actually active that her passive is now active if that makes sense um, and her skill which I use there is sharpshooter it's where she uses a sniper rifle to deal 400% attack power which is the most in the game apart from Tarkin's orbital strike no other character deals that amount of damage as a skill ability however when she, as you saw in the video when she um, when you press the button to attack she is vulnerable because she has to go on one knee and she has to it stop, stops her so she has to get into a sniping position um, so if you've got enemy mob around you you are vulnerable to attack and you could die as what happened to me there um, and again as I pressed it to do that but it's great so against enemies who are sort of hiding behind the other side of the fence or barriers it's a great ability to pull off and take out an enemy's rocket trooper or enemy sniper for example or whatever could be causing you causing you problems um, now I've been playing Jin here um, as a hit and run um, really waiting for ability to to, to um, go back on off its cooldown and then use it now put a sniper there, uh, although it's attacking the turret because there's no character, but normally she should lock on to Darth Vader or whoever the hero character is there. Um, but yeah, she'll use it as a, really as a hit and run, although I get forced pulled back to Darth Vader's vile clutches. Um, but yeah, she's fun to play, um, good variety, and, and in both these matches I managed to pull off victory, although the second game I won by a much greater margin. But overall, good games. Um, and as you can see, some more t people talk about tactics and how to play. In the video, you'll see how I'm pushing. I think this is tier three now. Um, I mean, um, and you can see me pushing up, yeah, rating three. You can see myself pushing up different lanes, probing, probing both sides. Um, because that way, what if, um, it, you know, at the end, it could matter. So if, if the enemy turret's down to, say, just a quarter health. Um, and you've taken out one turret and they need to take out one turret like a whole health turret you will have the upper hand because then you just need to focus on one turret do a kamikaze run and just, just take it out for the win um, that's what really essentially you need, need to do um, and the idea the idea when you're playing the game really is to a lot of hit and run he's got a grenade down now which is really going to hurt me a little bit um, but also keep the focus off the turrets because remember turrets you have to protect the turrets that is your job your, your objectives are to destroy their turrets and defend yours and take as little damage as possible too many players are getting a bit sucked up in the actual back heat of the battle and trying to kill leaders and but that isn't really what you need to do because that isn't your objective here because if you kill a leader several times you don't benefit from that yes they're not on the battlefield but and they can't spawn troops but there's no benefit so that's when you need to take advantage and push if you remove their leader um, but as I said the, the focus really is to apply as much pressure as you can on the turret so you can see top left turret now is taking a bit of damage his bottom right turret is taking damage and I'll just keep probing away because he's going to take out the sniper down there now and drop some units so when you roll back down to start defending 
And waiting for my sniper ability. There it is. Wallop and Darth Vader. Look at that. Half his health gone. You know, that's that's a formidable ability. Um, but the pressure on that side was a bit too much for me, so I had to run away. Lost a turret, but top left his turret has now gone. Dropped down my turret. Try and focus that rocket guy there, because that's going to attack my turret. Notice how the rocket trooper did not focus the anti-infantry turret. It focused on the objective turret. So that is critical to, to remember that when you are defending. Um, so I'm now going to probe again on his right side. Keep Vader busy. But he's um, really determined to kill me, which I think he may succeed. Now he's in turret range. Pick up that power up. Drop down a tank, just to keep those troopers there busy. As I push the right side, look at look now on, this, on the map. The right side turret is about to go. There it goes. It falls now. So this is what I talked about in my strategy video for the Empire. But this obviously works for both teams. But the sniper will deal less damage because it's not a rocket trooper. Um, and you just probe both sides take turns and then you'll end up winning winning your games um, obviously it's going to be hard against some players some players are a lot more savvy than others um, and some characters are more more powerful than others but anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you like it give it a thumbs up any questions feel free to post them below and I'll do my best to answer them and I will see you in the next video may the force be with you will benefit um, it increases their um, their, their range by 18% if the remaining number of turrets that you have is less than your enemy so say you lose a turret and your enemy's got two turrets and you only got one um, then the ability will kick in and always when the ability is active the circle will highlight and flash to let you know it's actually active that her passive is now active if that makes sense um, and a skill which I use there is sharpshooter. It's where she uses a sniper rifle to deal 400% attack power, which is the most in the game, apart from Tarkin's orbital strike. No other character deals that amount of damage as a skill ability. However, when she, as you saw in the video, when she um, when you press the button to attack. She is vulnerable because she has to go on one knee and she has to, it stop, stops her, so she has to get into a sniping position. Um, so if you've got enemy mob around you, you are vulnerable to attack and you could die as what happened to me there. Um, and again, as I pressed it to do that, but it's clean up, yeah, rating three, you can see myself pushing up different lanes, probing, probing both sides. Um, because that way, what, if... Um, you know, at the end, it could matter. If, they, if the enemy turret's down to, say, just a quarter health, um, and you've taken out one turret, and they need to take out one turret, like a whole health turret, you will have the upper hand, because then you just need to focus on one turret, do a kamikaze run, and just, just take it out for the win. Um, that's what really essentially you need, need to do. Um, and the idea, that, the idea when you're playing the game, really, is to... A lot of hit and run. He's got a grenade there now, which is really going to hurt me a little bit. Um, but also keep the focus off the turrets because remember turrets you have to protect the turrets that is your job your, your objectives are to destroy their turrets and defend jewels and take as little damage as possible too many players are getting a bit sucked up in the actual back heat of the battle and trying to kill leaders and but that isn't really what you need to do because that isn't your objective here because if you kill a leader several times you don't benefit from that yes they're not on the battlefield but and they can't spawn troops but there's no benefit so that's when you need to take advantage and push if you remove their leader um, but as I said the, the focus really is to apply as much pressure as you can on the turret so you can see top left turret now is taking a bit of damage his bottom right turret is taking damage and I'll just keep probing away because he's gonna take a sniper down there now and drop some units so when you roll back down to start defending and wait for my sniper ability there it is wallop and Darth Vader look at that half his health gone you know that's that's a formidable ability um, but the pressure on that side was a bit too much for me so I had to run away lost a turret but top left his turret has now gone drop down my turret try and focus that rocket guy there because that's gonna attack my turret notice how the rocket trooper did not focus the anti-infantry turret it focused on the objective turret 
So that is critical to remember that when you are defending. Um, so I'm now going to probe again on his right side. Keep Vader busy. But he's um, really determined to kill me. Which I think he may succeed. Now he's in turret range. Pick up that power up. Drop down a tank. Just to keep those troopers there busy. As I push great. So against enemies who are sort of hiding behind the other side of the fence or barriers. It's a great ability to pull off and take out an enemy's rocket trooper or enemy sniper, for example, or whatever could be causing you causing you problems. Um, now I've been playing Jin here um, as a hit and run, um, really, waiting for ability to 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 um, go back on off its cooldown and then use it. Now put a sniper there. Uh, although it's attacking the turret because there's no character, but normally she should lock on to Darth Vader or whoever the hero character is there. Um, but yeah, she'll use it as a really as a hit and run, although I get forced pulled back to Darth Vader's vile clutches. Um, but yeah, she's fun to play. Um, good variety, and, and, and in both these matches I managed to pull off victory, although the second game I won by a much greater margin. But overall, good games. Um, and as you can see some more t people talk about tactics and how to play in the video you'll see how I'm pushing I think this is tier 3 now um, I mean um, and you can see me push hey YouTube Force Arena players welcome to another video in this video we are looking at Jin Erso um, who made an appearance in the recent Rogue One movie um, let's look at Jin here in some 1v1 um, PvP. Funny enough, I played the same player twice. Um, I don't know if this has happened to you. Um, mind you, it was really early morning. I was playing this. I couldn't sleep. I've been a bit ill. Um, and I played a couple of games really, really early. I couldn't really think straight. Um, but I thought I'd give Jin a go as I unlocked her recently. As you can see, she moves rapidly. Does a little bit of a spin. Darth Vader pulls her back there. Um, but soon falls. Now, importantly with Jin, she's got some um, a passive and obviously her main skill. Now, her passive is what's called an underdog, and what that basically is is that her the attack power of any range unit, so anyone who's got a gun, for example, like the um, Pathfinders or your sniper, those kind of units.